Celebrating today the homegoing of someone who loved Jesus and loved people. Yeah. Great combination here. Well, thanks for being out this afternoon to pay tribute to a wonderful uh, young lady uh, who will love life. And uh, our purpose here, again, as a memorial service is, well, I always like to just say, the purpose here is to provide closure. You know, just as much as birth is part of life, passing from this life is part of life too, okay? Like, after all, I always say there's only two ways to get out of this world. Either we have to pass away or the rapture and go when Jesus comes. It's the only way we're going to get out of this world. And it's also to honor someone who has touched our lives, uh, someone affected us some way, somehow. Um, the Bible talks about these things that we live in are called tents. They're here temporarily, okay? Just a part time here that, that passes away. The Bible calls these bodies or our life a mist, a vapor. A little bit of too hot up there, Jeff. We can turn it down just a little bit, but um, and uh, it's a mist or a vapor, isn't it? It's here today and gone tomorrow, okay? And every one of us, as we get older in our life, more mature like we are, right? It seems like life is going so much faster, isn't it? I mean, it's like, wow, somebody slow the clock down. But our, our lives are a mist, a vapor, here today, gone tomorrow. I love the verse in the Bible that says, Though they be gone, yet shall they live. As we talk about a lot of memories of Lois here, those will be memories that will, she'll keep speaking, especially probably some of the grandkids. Okay, You'll hear her voice over and over. Don't do that. Don't go there. I told you. You know, those kind of things. Though they be gone, yet shall they speak, especially the kids. The children will remember those kind of things. Uh, I remember when my mom passed away. I'm still living in the shadow of the things my mom told me. Anybody else here? You know, though they be gone, yet shall they speak. They're still mom's watching somehow, okay? Uh, but I think that's true. So we're here to provide honor and to share about how uh, Lois touched our lives and blessed our lives today. And so join with me in prayer, would you please? In a few moments, I'm going to open it up for any of you to share any thoughts that you have that you'd like to share stories or thoughts about uh, uh, about Lois. And so you can start thinking about those right now. Father, thank you for this opportunity we have to come in and uh, share this time together about someone that loved you. And uh, and so, God, I pray that our comments today would honor you most of all and uh, that you would comfort the family, be with them right now. Just uh, be that steady hand in their lives right now. Lord, when uh, things come up and they're dealing with all of the little situations, and specifically right now, it's the closure time. Uh, I ask God you to, you to be, as your word says, that very present help in time of need. And uh, so we just commit that to you and commit this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Lois Irwin Thompson of Shehalis was born to Burton Winfield Irwin and Nell Harland Irwin in Hoquiam on October 10, 1921. She passed away on Monday, February 25, 2013, Liberty Country Place in Centroia. God knew that she had fought with all she had in her, and she was ready to go and be at rest with him. The greatest joy in Lois's life was the love of her family. She never missed a chance to tell any one of her children and grandchildren. It didn't take much of a conversation to find out what a special relationship she had with them. Lois grew up in Hoquiam, Washington, lived at 119 Carr Avenue her entire childhood. Wow. Uh, she attended Emerson Grade School and graduated from Hope William High School. The Carr Avenue home was the center of lots of love for family and exciting times for neighborhood children. It was where neighbors came to popcorn parties. I heard about some of those. It was a taffy pool parties I heard about. Uh, Girl Scout and Boy Scout meetings and ready for all kinds of day hikes and other fun activities. It seemed like there was always room for one more and it's where the neighborhood kids always seemed to gather. Lois had a beautiful high soprano voice and was often asked to sing solos for various community events. She sang on Saturday afternoons for entertainment before the movie started at the 7th Street Theater in Hope Wheel. Anyone ever been there? Just a fan. Yeah, I don't know that. Is it still, is it still there? Oh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. Okay, all right, just ask. Uh, she and her friend would get admission to go to the movies for free. Uh, she sang for the governor of uh, Washington when he attended a meeting in Hoquiam. She was the lead soprano singer <coughs> in her high school choir and never gave her up her love for singing. Uh, if you ask her grandchildren, they will tell you that when they would spend the night with her, she would wake them up with morning anyway, with singing. Uh, what was the song she'd always sing? What was it one you told me? 
Oh, you are my sunshine. <laughs> that one right there. Oh, I got you. Okay, my bad. Okay. Um, Lois attended Grace Harbor College, and she majored in library science. She never used her chosen vocation at that time, but years later she became a librarian in Okanagan, Washington. Uh, it was a dream come true for her. There's some people here that drove from Okanagan. Where are they? Welcome. I'm going hunting up there this fall. Okay. Never mind. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Thanks for coming all that way. Lois met Marshall Thompson of Kadat, Washington, Wisconsin, uh, after his discharge from World War II, and they were married not long after he was drafted for the Korean War, so the family moved to Fort Worth, California. Uh, when they returned, they located in Capelos Beach, Washington, and lived there until 1966. During this time, Lois was in the high school board and was instrumental in helping the, with the consolidation of the North Beach School District. She received a special commendation from the Washington State Superintendent of Public Instruction for her work on this project. Uh, Lois's children always knew her. Their friends were welcome anytime. The friends remember having special chairs that they liked to sit in, eating popcorn and coming into the house with a smell of fresh baked bread. Well, here it is. Having taffy pulls was another fun event at the Thompson home. She was the mom who organized Christmas caroling, the picnic, or snowball fights. She was the room mother, the chaperone, and the driver if one was needed, and she had more fun usually than the kids. In 1966, Lois and Marshall moved to Okanagan, Washington. Uh, they bought land and planted an apple orchard. Lois worked side by side with Marshall moving rocks, planting trees, moving sprinkler pipes, and picking apples. It was a hard job, but they enjoyed it, and they made wonderful friends there. In 1986, they moved to Port Angeles. Uh, became uh, both became busy helping a friend with his charter boats. It was a busy and fun life. They were up at 2 a.m. to get the boats out, and again, they had wonderful neighbors and loved living there. In 1997, Lois and Marshall moved to Chehalis near their children. Uh, after his passing in 1999, Lois needed to be busy, so she volunteered at the Twin Cities Senior Center. Uh, she went there every day for nine years until the flood of 2007. Uh, she loved the friends she made there, and the job gave her um, real purpose in life. She is survived by her sons, Harlan and Charlotte of Centralia, Gary, his fiance, Eliza of Thompson of Eugene, Oregon, uh, daughter Eileen and Jerry Owens of Napa Line, nine grandchildren. I always like to point out, where are the grandchildren? All grandchildren, raise your hands. Where they are. Okay, all right. Uh, Marshall, Amy, Nathan, Andrew, Dan, Heidi, Candace, Sean, and Shelby. Fifteen great grandchildren. Where are they at? You guys raised your hand before, didn't you? <laughs> There's a difference between grandchildren and great grandchildren. We'll talk about that later. Fifteen great grandchildren and one great great grandchild. Is it here? Is she, I, I should say yeah. Uh, is she? There she is. Wonderful. Great hair. What a great hair. Wow. Nine grandchildren, fifteen great grandchildren, one great great grandchild. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Lois was preceded in death by her husband, Marshall, uh, her parents, Burton and Nell L. Irwin, um, her brothers, Eugene Irwin and Harlan Irwin. And the family is asking that in lieu of flowers, uh, that please donate to the Twin City uh, Senior Center here in Shehalis or the Veterans Memorial Museum here in Shehalis in memory of Lois. Thank you. And the opportunity to uh, talk with the family a little bit about Lois, I learned about the the popcorn and the taffy poles. I haven't been in a taffy pole in years. Anybody here? Let's have one up at Harlan Charlotte's house next week. Come here. Yeah. Really? That sounds like so much fun. Anyhow, uh, Harlan told me how, how uh, she loved to uh, get some ice cream and go sit in the park. What a fun thing. Okay. Uh, and uh, I have here uh, her Bible that was rescued out of the flood of 2007. Inside this, I found something quite interesting, and it was uh, her certificate of baptism and church membership. And it was interesting, dated uh, 1980. And uh, uh, I found it interesting, and the scripture verse on the back of it, I think, is very appropriate. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcome the world? Only he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, 1 John 5. 